What's up, guys? Today, we'll be breaking down UFC on ESPN Plus 4's co-main event, Zaleski Dos Santos versus Curtis Millinder. We're going to start with Zaleski here. He's 32 years old, 5 feet 11 inches tall with a 73-inch reach. He's on a six-fight winning streak right now over great competition like Sean Strickland, Max Griffin, and Lyman Good. He has a capoeira background, which basically means he throws a lot of spinning shit and his stand-up flows very well. He always has his chin tucked. However, he keeps his hands low, so even with that chin tucked, he's still there to be hit. Maybe not knocked out, but he's there to be hit. He's extremely tough. Just ask Lyman Good. Uh, Lyman Good almost gave up between rounds in that fight. Um, he, told his cor- he told his corner, I don't want to be knocked out. He said that when they were saying he's extremely hesitant, like what's going on, this isn't how you usually fight. And it just seemed, guys, like he was scared, to be perfectly honest. Um, Zaleski also has very good cardio. Um, he showed that against Lyman Good, showed that against Max, Max Griffin. He slows down a little bit, but no more so than anybody else. And I would say he has very solid cardio, especially for a guy with a fairly kick-heavy game. Um, he's good on the ground. And I really feel like that might be one of the difference, difference makers in this fight. People say he never shoots for takedowns. And I honestly agreed until I rewatched some tape. Um, if you guys watched back the Lyman Good fight, he actually shot for six takedowns. Wasn't very successful. Um, went one for six on those takedown attempts. But right off the bat, um, he caught a kick from Lyman Good and took Lyman's back. So this guy has skills on the ground, skills in the clinch. Um, and for somebody like Curtis Millinder, who's a very kick-heavy uh, kick guy himself, you got to be very much aware of being taken down. Uh, let's move on to Curtis Millinder here. He's 31 years old, 6 feet 2 inches tall, with a 78-inch reach. Guys, I know it says on the UFC's website that he has a 76-inch reach, but trust me, sites like Tapology are usually more reliable for these kind of statistics, so we're going to go with 78 inches here. Um, Millinder is a very dominant striker while at range. So if you go back to the Tiago Alves fight, extremely dominant, kept the fight at range almost the entire time and uh, looked outstanding in that one. He's great at distance. He's very good with get distance control, except when he's not the aggressor. Curtis is very used to being the aggressor, very used to walking guys down. He's a big, intimidating guy for welterweight. Um, but when he's not the aggressor, when he's being backed up, when he's being pressured, he seems to struggle. Um, a good example of that is his fight, his last fight here against Sayar Bahadur Zada. That fight, um, while Curtis was dominant for the most part, when Sayar pressured him, he had trouble. Um, his defense kind of falls apart. He gets hit a lot more when he's moving backwards. He's a very plodding fighter. His footwork isn't the greatest. So when he's trying to circle out and that kind of stuff, he doesn't do a very good job of that. Um, so struggles, really, really struggles with guys that are pressure-heavy fighters, which he hasn't faced many in the past. Um, and the other thing about him, which is goes alongside with footwork, is he has surprisingly poor takedown defense. This is a very athletic guy, a guy who looks like he should be able to wrestle um, and even if he can't wrestle very well, that length and that athleticism should make his takedown defense not terrible, but I think it is. Um, going back to that same fight against Sayar, his last fight here, Sayar's a kickboxer. Um, Sayar's kind of like gone between kickboxing and MMA. More recently, it's been MMA, but he's primarily a kickboxer, and he scored six takedowns against Curtis Millinder. That's not a good thing, guys. That's... Uh, that's not looking good for Curtis here. Um, and to make it worse, Curtis sucks on the ground. I don't care what you say. This guy's terrible on the ground. When you get him down, more often than not, he's stuck on his back the rest of that round. Now, nobody that he's fought thus far has been able to really take advantage of that. He hasn't fought anybody who's extremely skilled on the ground, anybody who's going to really make him pay for that, um, because the only people that have really got him down are, who are they here? Max Griffin. And who was the other one? Oh, Sayar, of course. So uh, neither of those guys really made him pay. Neither of those guys are elite on the ground. They're certainly better than Curtis is, though. And uh, this guy could be in trouble if Zaleski gets him down. I know most people are thinking it's going to be a stand-up war. Fair enough. Zaleski doesn't go for many takedowns for the most part. But as I stated previously, he went for six against Lyman Good. Um, so how I kind of see this one playing out, I think it's going to be... 
very, there's going to be a lot of adversity for both these guys on the feet. I think Millinder's going to, for the most part, get the best of him. I think if Zaleski can walk him down, then Millinder might be in some trouble, but I don't really see that happening. Um, I know that Zaleski's extremely tough and can walk through some shots, but I really don't see him walking through everything that Millinder throws. Millinder's a very powerful striker. What I kind of see happening, it's going to get hairy on the feet. Zaleski might be in some trouble, and he's going to go for the takedown or the clinch or something. I feel like he's going to get this fight to the ground, and I think once he gets him down, he's going to be able to finish him on the ground. So I'm going to go with Zaleski Dos Santos. Um, I think he's going to finish him late on the ground. I don't know if it's going to be a TKO. I'm not sure if it's going to be a submission, but I really see Zaleski having a huge advantage on the mat. And a lot of people aren't really noticing that. Or if they are, they're saying that, oh, well, it's going to be a stand-up or anyway. Zaleski wants to be entertaining. I think you might have a better point there if this fight was in Brazil. If he was trying to entertain his fan base. But it's in, where is it, like Nebraska or something? I don't exactly know where it is. It's in somewhere in the States that Zaleski gives zero fucks about. And I think his main purpose here is going to be to try to win. Um, obviously a lot of these guys, Justin Gaethje and others are looking to entertain the crowd. I think Zaleski, maybe he'll do that early on and then realize he's not really doing so hot. He's getting the shit beat out of him. Why the fuck would I do this when I could just take this man down and win the fight? So that's what I see happening. So Zaleski Dos Santos for the win here. So that's my prediction, guys. Let me know what you think down below and, uh, enjoy the fights on Saturday.